Facebook is a great environment for you to post your anecdotes, your successes, your failures, your questions, your solutions, and then because uh, I monitor it, and it's great because we can discuss it here, and I love when we do what's called a best practice sharing. I'm going to start off with uh, a key question, Carol. I don't know if Carol's in the house. Carol wants to know, and, and this is I need to, to know from all of you what, what you would prefer to do, please. In fact, ah, I should have set up a poll. I should have set a poll. Too late. Can't do a poll. Mm, okay. I would like to know that when I record these, I record them, uh, the video, and I upload them. Uh, they're on YouTube, but for boot campers, these are private, so other people just can't access them. Only the the public ones I, I make public on YouTube, but they're all there and they're videos. I want to know how important the video is. Do you guys uh, go in and uh, when you want to catch up on something or you see I talked, to, we discussed an, an important topic to you, uh, do you watch it or do you just listen? Do you not care about the video of seeing, <laughs> of seeing this? Uh, I mean, honestly, because Carol wants to know if they can, I can also include an MP3 so that you can download. Now, I don't know, if, so the question is, I, the, the, the issue is I definitely want to do the MP3s because you have that in boot camp now where you can download it and it's easy. Of course, you can download the MP4 and just listen to it too, but that's a big file. Now, Carol wants to want to be able to listen on, on a way to work or, or on, a, on a walk, you know what I mean? So tell me, I'd like to, just give me your thoughts on it. Do you care about the video? Say yes video, no video. You won't hurt my feelings. And uh, is the MP3 uh, the only thing you'll need? MP3 only, you can write. You can write video and MP3 or just MP3. Kind of like that. So I know. And I, I will research ways to see how I can upload these as easy MP3s and you could download it. Because that's a definite. But I just need to know if you still want the videos too. I don't care. I'll do what you want. I work for you. <laughs> so the question I want to address first is uh, sent in by Dawn. It was, I think it was the first one posted. Dawn wants to know, can we touch on hired help? Farming out certain tasks. So everybody start thinking too of the tasks that you farm out, that you pay somebody else to do. Now, I don't think Dawn is talking about having staff. She's talking about you know somebody on a on a gig basis, right? A gig basis. Uh, can we touch on well, out, what outsourced practical tasks that can save time and money? And how much uh, would you pay them? How would you pay them? And is there anything that perhaps we should never outsource? So I, I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to give you my take on this. I also would hope that you would be active there and type in your thoughts here. If you, um, everybody in the house, if you, if, if you have the same issue and you're going to pull up a chair and really listen to see what we have to say here, or if you're currently using people, I call I call them. People in my stable, my stable, and I mean that with all due respect and affection because I hire people to do the work for me that I don't like to do. So that's the first answer I have for you, Dawn, and for everybody else. I mean, it sounds logical. It sounds like the obvious answer, but honest to goodness, I, you know, I'm the kind of guy who I try to do everything myself, and that's not good because sometimes I'll end up spending way too much time making mistakes and not loving the task so I procrastinate and I don't get it done. Then, boom, a light bulb goes off. Man, all those hours I spent doing a task I don't like to do and I don't do it well is pulling me away from the stuff I like to do that I do well. You know, the, the amount of money I'm going to pay somebody makes sense. So that's that cost benefit analysis. For instance, some of you may mow your own grass, cut your own grass. Maybe you don't specifically mind it terribly and you'd rather do it. For me, I would rather not do it. Not only do I get an allergy attack every time, but I would much rather pay somebody uh, because I'd, I just don't like it. And so the cost-benefit analysis is big for me. We all have our own thing, so no, that's number one. 
Now, when you break it down to tasks, you know, this, you know, accounting, I have an accountant and I keep the very basic minimal books and I send stuff to him and he pros he does the stuff. Okay, that's for me. I do a lot of my own web work, web design, but I know what I can do and I know what I can't do. So I have an amazing web designer on call for me. She's awesome. And by the way, if you need her name, I'm happy to share. I've given her a lot of business because she's amazing and she charges by the hour or by the project. Very fair. She does amazing work. That's another thing I outsource. Um, and, and there are several other things too. Now, how do you deserve, how do you determine a price to pay them? Well, number one, you know, I would, I would definitely shop around. You want to shop around to see what different people charge, what their experiences are. Uh, I always love hiring um, other solopreneurs, people like me. I don't care if they work from home or in an office, but you know, I'm frugal with my money. But I want to get expertise. I want to get somebody who's reliable. So sometimes you'll pay a little bit more for somebody who has more experience or can work faster or can, you know, what whatever what, before you go hire somebody, Dawn, and everybody else, before you start researching and looking up people, um, make a list of exactly it's almost like you're gonna hire somebody. You are, but you're not. To know exactly what you want that person to do. And don't don't vary from that. Stick to it. Don't make exceptions because you're gonna regret it. You're not gonna be happy. And and then get different prizes. You know, and perhaps if it's a lot of work done and everybody else, you can put somebody on a retainer. A come to an agreement for a month, one monthly fee, and and they'll agree to do X amount of work. Sometimes it's less work, sometimes it's more. It balances out. It's fair for you, fair for them. I think a retainer is a great option. Or of course the 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 hourly rate, and perhaps you can negotiate that, especially if you think it's going to be ongoing work, not just a, on an ad hoc basis. Negotiate that. The other idea I have for you is to barter it. You build up barter. If they know that you're in travel and you love travel, um, that, then come to terms that, that there's going to be no money exchanging hands unless, of course, they book a trip that exceeds the, the barter bank that you have. In fact, my brother in New York, he belongs to a local barter organization. Okay? And I don't know if any of you guys do this or have heard of it. It's amazing. He buys almost everything through this barter organization. Heck, we had a birthday party for my mom uh, back in April, and he bartered with the restaurant. We still had to pay cash for a certain amount of things and for the gratuities. But but then he has his own stuff he puts in, his own products. It goes to a big barter machine, you know. So I, a barter is a great idea. And then, and then the final question, then I'm going to check the boards here, see what you guys have to say. Because I'm a big believer in this, friends. Don't weigh yourself down. Don't be cheap with, 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 with your time and don't waste your, all the positive, wonderful things that you can do with great success, with great passion, and to just don't get admired because you're going to end up procrastinating and it could cost you more in the long run when you have to hire somebody in a pinch when you've missed a deadline, you're late for something. And it, it, even if it's designing presentations, group proposals, group presentations, PowerPoint things, have somebody else do it. I would love to offer to do that for you because I love it. I consider myself to be a, an expert PowerPointer. I love editing videos and stuff. I just don't have the time. I can't do it for other. I have enough on my plate, so I can't offer you that service. But there are other people who do that. Oh, um, it, it, let me answer this. Uh, what well, you should never outsource. Great question. Maybe I'm not thinking of everything, but the first thing that came to my mind was, uh, you, you know, social media. I think is a great thing you should consider. To outsource, and I know we've had Catherine Hegan. Do you guys know Catherine? That's what she does. She does social media, social marketing, specifically for travel professions. That's it. That's she. You talk about a niche within a niche within a niche. She's awesome. And you know, may, if you're going to hire somebody, you have to have great trust. So before you have somebody do your social media, check them out, call their referrals, see the work they do, because you're giving them your username and password stuff to upload and, and, and do stuff on social media that's talking to your clients. So I'm not saying don't do it, but consider it very, very strongly. Number two is your list. You know, all you have is, well, you, your brand, but also your list. And if you're going to have somebody doing email blasts for you or direct mailings to you, and I know some consortia, 
do that. I, I was one of the first actually that started that at vacation.com where we would uh, we begged our members at that time to send your list and we promise we're not going to do anything with it but let us do the mailings for you and now it's a huge huge program with, with a lot of hosts, a lot of consortia and so forth. But that's something that you know you want to be very cautious of, you want to be careful of, you want to make sure that you have a, a signed agreement that that list is yours, you want it, it can't be used for anything else. Um, so let me take a look to see what you guys have said. I'm going to go to the next question, but I hope that I've helped in any way because I, I very much endorse it. Let's see. Jean Ann says, extremely important. I watch, love seeing your expressions. Thank you, Jean Ann. I appreciate that. Because I can keep doing these. It's easy. I have them recorded here, and I, I don't do any editing. I just cut off the beginning, and maybe a little bit at the end. So, Jean Ann, thanks for that. Uh, Richard says, uh, MP3, great idea. Julie says, yes, video. This is awesome, everybody. Thank you. Richard says, just MP3. Okay, that's good. I'm going to go back through this, and, I, and I'll look at everything. Patty, I know it sounds funny, but yes, video and MP3. Cool. Because video, again, I can just keep doing it, and then ultimately, you can choose. You want to watch, or do you just want to listen? Ruth says MP3. Uh, Lena says, I like both. Judy says, I don't care much about the video. MP3 is good. Cool beans. Gene answers video and MP3. Active presenter can do both for you. Okay, active presenter. I need to write that down, but I'm going to go back and look at your comments after. Thank you. I think I have more options. Uh, let's people listen, view in a variety of situations. Right, give both options, video and MP3. If Alan says yes, video, have not downloaded MP3, but it sounds like a good idea. You know, I am going to check out iTunes, but it would have to be restricted. You know, it has to be restricted because this isn't for everybody. It's just for you guys. So I don't know if that's an option for me. I have a friend who does uh, uh, iTunes, you know, podcasts all the time, and I'm going to check that out. Gene Ann says I use a uh, a VA to set up and manage my autoresponders for touching clients with marketing and other batch communications. So now we're on the subject of uh, outsourcing stuff, farming out stuff. And by the way, remember, check with your accountant that if you do outsource stuff and you pay them over a certain amount, then you have to 1099 them. Uh, I may be wrong. Is it five hundred dollars? You have to. Yeah, your, your accountant has to issue a ten ninety nine if you pay them over a certain amount. Uh, so check that out. So Jean Ann, you use somebody to set up and manage order responders for your emails, and I think that's awesome. That's great. Why bog yourself down in something that you don't want to mess up? That's got to be perfect. That's great. Sam, hey Sam, says video and MP three and the PDFs uh, provide in bootcamp. Okay. Good deal, but I, I don't think I need to convert these to transcripts, these, these uh, Ask Stuart hours. Nobody's asked for that. That's costly. I would do it if everybody needed it, but I don't think everybody needs that. I think everybody enjoys watching or listening. Yvonne says, I like the idea of outsourcing, but not sure where to get the right person. What are some examples of outsourcing to organize groups? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, there's two questions there. Um, not sure where to get the right person. You know, what, what, one of the things you want to do is, uh, I'm going to give you a few examples here. If you're part of any networking groups at all, ask your local networking groups. Now, clearly, you don't necessarily have to hire somebody that that's local. It depends on what you need them to do. I like having my accountant local, local Rosalani, who's my uh, web designer. She's not local. She's in Illinois, but that's okay because we have Skype meetings. You know, so definitely start networking, asking your friends, your inner circle, or people who you trust, because they may be using somebody today. Uh, number two, you might check to see if there's any local organizations, any clubs, any groups that you would know these people would be a part of locally. You know, uh, and, and and go to that group, that organization, and maybe they're a member there. The, the next is a little chancy, but you can check referrals and testimonials. You can check something like Craigslist. You know, people who do gigs. People who are solopreneurs, that's one free way they promote and advertise, you know. Uh, another way is Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Anybody use it? F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. I've had them design, if I don't need a fancy schmancy logo, they do logos for me, simple stuff. I've had them do all kinds of crazy stuff. Five dollars. Granted, it could cost you more if you need fancy stuff, but five bucks is what I'm saying. So check that out. And the other thing is outsourcing to organize your groups. You know, you, you may want to, if, if you're doing a lot of social media stuff with your group, which I endorse, maybe you have somebody set that up for you and manage that for you. Um, if, uh, if you're, 
you don't like uploading and getting all the stuff in the system with mailing lists, you can do something like Gene Ann does and hire somebody just to manage, you know, database management, you know, to set up the list, to to set up the email blast that you want to send out to those groups, uh, or just to set you up with a database. Heck, you, you know, I don't endorse specific products here. I did for the first time a couple of months ago, Client Ease. I love Darla. I love the product. And whether you use it or not, it's up to you. But so many of you aren't using a good, up-to-date, current uh, management tool. It's not just for CRM, but it's for storing all your business, all your clients. It's so important. And I bet you're not doing it because you're afraid. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to get bogged down in stuff. I don't know how to work. I'm afraid. We'll start it tomorrow, and you never start. Tomorrow never comes. Well, maybe you can, you know, they do, I think they do training, and I'm just giving you as an example. If you're afraid to do something new when it comes to technology, hire somebody to do it for you or to teach you how to do it. Maybe you could pay Dollar or her team extra money to walk you through it to get it all set up. But I think it's also highly intuitive. You can figure it out. Or higher, she, I'm sure she or somebody uh, who's a super user would be happy to spend some time with you to show you how to do it. So those are the things I think you can outsource, uh, especially when it comes to a group. You know, uh, when you're doing your group launch sequence, which we're going to talk about. Lynn here had some great questions about group launch sequence. We're going to tackle that in just a minute. And maybe you're not comfortable making slide presentations in PowerPoint. Hire somebody to do it. It could be the best investment you ever make. And perhaps, listen carefully, they can create a template. So if they create the template, all you need to do is go and customize it for every time you make a presentation. I mean, that's brilliant. That's what I do with a lot of my stuff. I recreate the wheel, as they say. So, Yvonne, I hope that helps. Uh, let's see. Sam says, I use Catherine Heek for my Facebook. Not only is she saving me time, but I'm learning a lot by seeing what she posts. I intended to use her for just six months, but I've been happy with her service, so have extended that. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Sam, testimonials here are awesome, and I know that's how Catherine and all of us, we build our business word of mouth. Catherine Heek, she's a friend. So, everybody, if you want some help, talk to Catherine. Thank you, Sam, for that. Linda says, I do most of the stuff myself. I pay for professional flyers or for coupons for my trade show. I paid for help at trade shows, cash or check. Okay, so there's a great way to outsource. And Linda, I want to, uh, I want to address your question, everybody. Uh, get to think about, when we did talk about this, I don't, this was not last S. Stewart Hour, but a few sessions ago, we talked about trade shows creative ways to do trade shows but we did discuss it at a formal one and I do want to spend time there but hey folks if you have a great trade show idea something you've done that works or something you've done that failed that was a waste of money let us know here because I want to come back to that and I want to see what you guys have to say yeah I'm really making your fingers work here huh I'm really help hoping you're tapping away so let's keep going here, yeah, Linda. We're going to get back here. Promise, Linda says video in MP3. Uh, um, and Lena says that I'm thinking about contacting the local community college to see if I can find someone who can help with certain projects. Brilliant idea. And Lena, you just gave me, you reminded me of something I totally forgot to suggest, which is interns. How many of you have ever used interns? You uh, lo local college students or even high school students who want to learn business, who want to learn social marketing. Again, you want to hire somebody as an intern, hire, meaning you don't have to pay them, but, but make sure you're going to write the letter and help endorse them, allow them to put it on their resume. You can actually be a very helpful tool for them as they are for you. Think about internships, and you can pay if you want paid internship. My son's doing a paid internship in Manhattan for a company called Likeable Media. You know, internships are very important. These students want it. They need it. They love it. And you're going to give them great experience. That's a whole other subject. Lynn says Fiverr is great. She uses it. Sandy says uh, that she's had very good luck with Fiverr. Cool. And I'm not making any commission from Fiverr, by the way. Go knock yourselves out. Do it. Uh, let's see. Linda says our business women's networking group just added an intern and graphic arts. She is offering her services right now for free. I look at uh, I looked at our networking group. So there you go. That's how Linda found this uh, through her business women's networking group. 
and added an intern for graphic arts. And I, offering services for free, that's huge. Right? She wants that experience. She wants to get her name out there. Jean Ann says, it's best to ask a, a VA, what is your favorite function to do? Some prefer copywriting. Others data entry. Others, others systems analysis and efficiency. You want to give them work that will play to their strength. People will get uh, people get what they like to do done first and fastest. You got it. That is golden wisdom, Jean Ann, and I want to thank you for sharing that. You know, a lot of us sometimes we we you know be great. Hey, we have our kids do it, or we have a, a relative do it, or a neighbor do it. And then all of a sudden you give them a project, and I've heard these stories. The project doesn't get done, or it gets done lousy. Uh, it misses deadlines because they don't really want to do it. You know, so maybe it'll be wonderfully convenient and easy for you to ask this person to do it because you know them. They're a good person. They're a good soul. But they don't want to do that work. They don't want to do that entry. They're not a good graphics. Whatever it is, just like you, my friends, we talk about this all the time. Don't take on business that's not in your love circle. Don't take on customers who you don't want to work with. Don't work with suppliers who you don't prefer working with. And, and treat them the same way. And it's a great quality in a leader is to know, because uh, <laughs> this is part of my speech on Friday, you got to get the right people on the bus. If you don't get the right people on the bus, you'll have the wrong people on the bus, and the bus won't go where you need it to go. Make sense? Thank you, Jean Ann, for reminding us of that. Uh, Judy says, I had a high school intern to help me clean up my database. Beautiful. Absolutely. I love it. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that, too. Okay. Uh, Dawn, I hope that helped. Linda, well, uh, creative ideas for trade show. Nobody posted anything, so I'm going to see if I can turn the, the brain here to see if I come up with some quick ideas. Uh, the, the, I think the most important thing to keep in mind, Linda, is that people are going to walk by. And once they walk by and they don't stop to talk to you, they're never walking by again. The opportunity is gone. You've missed them. So it's all about how to arrest their attention. Arrest their attention. Get them to look at you. Get them to want to come talk to you. So you don't want to do anything that's going to push them away. You know, as you walk by a booth sometimes, think about it, you know, and you circle because you don't you don't want to be attacked. No, 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 no. It's got to be welcoming. And 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 I definitely think that stuff on a table is important because people love the opportunity to see what's on the table and to pick up stuff. But if you're standing there hawking over the table, they may be intimidated to come to you. So perhaps stand on the side. Give them an opportunity to step in, right? Allow them to step in. Put so much on that table, and I don't. You don't have to give away little tchotchkes and freebies and pens. Some people put candy in a bowl. You know, sometimes that works too. Or if you can have a drawing, they drop their card in. Or if they don't have a card, they fill out a piece of paper. But I highly suggest some kind of a poster. Spend the money on a big poster, and and one word, two word, three word. That's it. If it's too much writing, they won't read it. They'll walk on. Case in point, billboards. When you're driving at 90 miles an hour, don't drive that fast. When you're driving on a highway, you know, those billboards, the great greatest designed billboards, will deliver the message in seconds. And you need to do the same. So I know I may not giving you specific strategies, but I'm giving you fundamental strategies, Linda, and everybody else, that, uh, you, you know, be, be wary. You don't want to be too aggressive. Stand off to the side. I do endorse having a lot on the table so they'll come over and take a look, but they're only going to come and take a look if there, there's a sign, there are words, or something cool on the table. What can you bring that's cool? Can you bring a palm tree? Can, can you bring, put sand there and put shells there? Get super duper awesomely creative. When I started uh, the Nest, okay, I was the guy who wrote the business plan for Nest which was the very first consortium only for home-based agents. I did this under the, uh, the management team of the Travel Savers Group. We had our very first conference at the Palms Hotel in Las Vegas. Man, I am everything if not different consistently outside the box. So I did an inside-outside trade show. Now hear me out. Rather than the suppliers doing their typical thing, which is fine, it works, I had the travel agents 
set up their own booth. And I have never ever to this day seen such creatively designed booths ever in my life than when the travel agent set up the booth to showcase what they do for the supplier. Could you imagine if you took that if they took that creativity and did it for the for consumers? Holy cow! Brilliant. I wish I had taken pictures. I wish I did. Absolute brilliance, my friends. So be very, very creative. I hope that's enough for you to go on, Linda. Okay, now we're going to jump into uh, uh, Lynn's question about, about that. Dawn says, awesome. Thank you. You betcha. Uh, Jean Ann says, a trade shows push the table to the back of the booth and stand in front greeting people. Yes, that's another very effective way. You want to dress sharp. You want to be smiling. And you want to ask uh, a neat question. You want to say hello. An inviting, an engaging question. Not, can I help you? No. A great engaging question. Uh, Gene answers trade show, have a raffle with a short survey to get lead information. Yes. Raffles are great. And remember, it's not necessarily about you giving out business cards. That's easy. You can hand a business card to everybody walking by. Half of them will go in the trash. Half of them will go in their bags. And you're going to go home and sit back and wait for the phone calls to come in. And they may not. Your job is to get people on your list. So have something of value there. Don't sell them. Because then nobody wants to be sold to. They're going to run away. But what if you said, oh, so let's just say you're going to promote Alaska. That's it. Your sign just says Alaska. That's it. That's it. You know, don't, don't please don't go being a generalist. Try to focus Know, know your audience. See, I'm going back to the trade show thing. Know your audience. What are they there looking for? Don't sell what you think you you got to sell. Okay? You need to focus on what these people, you know, know the people, know the demographics. What do you think is going to be of biggest interest? And I would hope it's a match for what you do, what you love, your passion. Especially if you have a major connection to this expo, to the organization. Okay? And say, hey, can I sign you up? I can send you my top 10 best travel tips for Alaska. Can I send you that email one time? Who's going to say no? So here, let me take your email address, write that down, and I will send you this email. It's a PDF. My top 10, I've been to Alaska before, travel tips or resorts, whatever it is. You don't have to hand them out there, but you've got to get them on your list. Okay? Linda says, I did a drawing for a gift bag and had candy and balloons. So I put my graphic artist to work on a poster. Bingo. Uh, and, and make sure you know in advance how you're going to display it, how it's going to hang. It's going to be on a pedestal. Because the worst thing in the world is to get there and say, okay, what do I do with my sign now? And sometimes, you know, this boot camp, it's on a, that's a picture frame, a general a picture frame holder, you know. See if that'll work, as long as it doesn't fall over. Um, Sandy said, I was at the Palms for the nest meeting. Oh my gosh, Sandy, that's right. You were one of the very first original members of Nest. And uh, you remember that conference at the Palms, our very first ever. Thank you for rem remembering that. Jean Ann says, trade show, promote your service and what makes you different, not the vendor. You bet. If you're going to be giving out Royal Caribbean brochures, with all due respect to Royal Caribbean, um, th well, fine. They're either going to call Royal Caribbean or they're going to call their own agent. You know, you're not a library. You're not a library, so Jean Ann, thank you very much for that. And if you're going to give out a flyer, I mean, your number is huge. Your email address is huge. Your cell phone is huge. Text me. Trust me, they won't. But the fact that you're going to open yourself up to be vulnerable, they're going to like a lot. Okay? And make sure that if they go to your website, they like what they see. They like what they see. You see? Um, all right, Linda, hope that helped. Um, Hans said, please send list to me. Which list? Hans, which list do you need? I don't remember. What was I talking about, about a list? And I will read back. All right, let's move on. I'm going to come back to you. All right, Lynn, now listen up, everybody. This is a great question. <clears throat> I have questions about the group launch sequence, GLS. I'm meeting with winery owners to propose a group trip to Italy for their wine club members and customers. Because of their winery and venue duties, they can only get away for a week in January, February, or early, Mar early March. That makes sense. So the trip is going to be planned for 2018. If they decide to go ahead, 
they want me to promote the trip at their November December events which means this November December for 2018 now we've set the stage if the trip isn't until March 2018 how can I start a launch sequence as early as November how do I get people excited about a trip that's over a year away okay you do how's that you do and it will work pardon me while I have some coffee mm. I'm a big believer that you can never promote a big trip too early with my personal river cruise group my partial ship charter I promoted it that far in advance exactly the situation Lynn that you're talking about here really far in advance well it was a year and a half maybe even two years honest to goodness no not quite two it was over a year and a half year and three quarters I did it and 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 you know you, you talk about this 30-day window that would apply uh, yeah everything in group load sequence applies the key is you you don't want to give them any reason to wait because then they will when you're talking about a major trip like this uh, w w whether they're retired or not it's still a very big commitment of money it's a big commitment of time and you know when people plan big trips especially if they want to go with this winery with these people where there, there's loyalty uh, this is not going to be a normal usual vacation that they would take right they probably no, well, next year we'll go here, next year we'll go there, whatever. So you're asking them to, to do something outside their bounds. So the earlier, the better. This is a benefit. This is a positive. Here's what I did, and you can see my videos. Okay? I, I, a year and three quarters out, we started with the Whisper campaign. And, and then we scheduled the, the, for our first launch, the sequence of events were four webinars we did webinars now yeah my mom was on it Kimberly's parents were on it and then there were some aunts uncles and other friends and stuff most of whom had never ever river cruised before so they they appreciated the fact that we were giving them a uh, uh, education we, we didn't position it as we were selling this go back to the group launch sequence your mission on the group launch sequence Lynn and everybody and Hans too is to remove all the obstacles so that when it comes time to say okay now you can give me your deposit there's no reason for them to say no because those people who who either attend all four or uh, uh, or, or watch them after okay who stay with to the end they're going you're going to see a couple people drop out after the first, after the second, after the third. But if they're hanging in there, they're going to go because they're interested. And these are short presentations. They're themed, and, and each presentation has a mission, especially if it's a new kind of an event. You have to teach them what a river cruise is, for instance, right? Now, in this case, Lynn, you absolutely positively have to feature front and center the people at the winery. You have to feature front and center, leverage the winery, maybe even do a meeting there and broadcast it live or record it and then upload the video. I mean, this is, this is everybody's dream to do. A, a lot of you have dreams about doing a great group trip with a winery because uh, the, the, the consumers need to see that it's not all about you, the agent. It's about this, this business, their loyalty, these people. You grow the grapes, I drink your wine. We're connected, you know? So what I would suggest you do is you do it normally as planned, as planned, early, early, early. And don't even say the word, I know this is early. Don't make excuses, Lynn. Don't ever make excuses. You have every right to promote this super duper early. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have a VIP opportunity for purchasing. And then you're going to have a, the open booking window. You're going to clearly communicate those dates. You're not going to take any money before, and when the, the, the window ends, it closes. And I guarantee you, you, the biggest sales day you're going to have 
is when you open up for business, that 24, 48 hour period, and then close it right there, those first few hours. But here's what you're going to do. The opportunity of being so far in advance is you're going, you can do a second launch. I did that. So my first launch I did in September of last year. My second launch I did in, I think, late January, early February with all different people because word spread. And friends and family who are coming said, we have some friends and family. I'm like, great. You know what? We're going to do another series, and I'll start taking deposits, but I'm not taking deposits now. Because you want people to go through the series, to the sequence. They have to go through it. Because trust me, if all you do is show them the, the bottom line price, they will have no idea of all the amazing goodies and incredible things you have included. And they're going to go right online and compare price point to price point. And I sure hope your price point is higher, is the highest, because you're going to include so much more. It's the package. It's the value. Remember, with groups, you don't want to sell ever the bare bones trip down off the shelf price or package or product because then they can book that anywhere and they'll shop till you drop. So they have to go through the sequence before you reveal pricing. Now what you're saying, but Stuart, but for your second launch in late January, February, your pricing was already out there. That's true. But what I did, I never, ever, ever published the prices on the website or anywhere. Anywhere. The pricing was only at that point in the original presentation in the fourth. I didn't reveal the pricing till the very end. And if you want, you could remove those videos from public consumption. So the only way they could see pricing is if one of their friends sent them over the PDF, the confidential pricing sheet. And the other thing I would like to suggest, I'm going to read your comments and thoughts and we're going to move on. But this was big, is that because this is important, Lynn and everybody, and I did this, because it is so far in advance, I would give them a nice big fat window of cancellation with no penalty because it is so early. I'm serious, and I, I had two cancellations. Uh, you know, when, when, when it reached the point when that initial deposit was no longer refundable and the next deposit was due. See, that's what I did. I did a two deposit thing. In my case, I did $400 per person, fully refundable. I'm talking, they had two, three months. So they felt totally comfortable. Sure, you don't want to go, you change your mind, I'll give you money back. I wanted to be as easy to do business with as possible. Why? Because it was so early in advance, it was okay. I was not going to put myself into any risky situation. I was not sending any, any lists to the cruise line yet. They didn't need it. There were no commitments made on my part. But so I wanted to be super duper easy. And on the same date when that initial deposit was no longer refundable, that's when the second deposit, $400 per person, was due. And that's when I had two couples on that day say, it's too chilly, we don't want to go on the Rhine River in April. I said, okay. <laughs> and then the other couple gave me no reason whatsoever. I, you know, what are you going to do? You have to be friendly because I didn't know if they were, maybe they were going to come back and change their mind. Maybe they had other friends and family that were going to send it that they just couldn't go. So I hope that helped. All right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, let me see if you guys have any comments. Oh. That list. I don't have that list, Hans. I was joking around. I was making that up. I, I bet you there's another boot camper that has a list of the top 10, 5, 20 best uh, things not to miss, things to do, things not to, things to remember, things not to forget uh, when going to Alaska. Do any of you guys have that? I've got to believe in boot camp. Somebody out there has been to Alaska enough, has studied it enough where you've put together this list that you send, that you give, that's part of what you give to your clients to keep them on your list so they love you and they wow, Hans is great man, he sends me these top five things, top three things, things never forget because he gives me this free stuff, you know, I don't have that, I made that up, I don't know if you were joking around but if you're serious, I guarantee you somebody's got it and we could share it, 
Yvonne hey, says, if somebody says yes, send me the, t the 10 tips. Does that give you the permission to continue sending the email messages? Well, here's what you do, and it's a great question. So you're at the trade show. You say, listen, I, I'm happy to send that to you. Um, I think what you do is you do, you do uh, uh, within that same email, okay, you, uh, I wouldn't email the PDF to them, first of all. If you know how to do this, you want to put the PDF uploaded onto your website rather than email. So what you do is say here, I'm happy we met at the trade show, it was delightful, blah blah blah. We talked about Alaska and reference the conversation, how exciting. I promise to send you this. Here it is. It's on this page. Rather than send a big file over the internet, it's loaded up here. I think it'll be even simpler for you to download, save, or print. It's what I do now when I offer freebies. So they're going to come to a web page where you, at least they're going to connect to you. They're going to learn more about you. They're going to see you. Uh, maybe they'll like you on social media. You're going to have some testimonials there. You're going to design a beautiful page saying welcome. And, and that's where you're going to send everybody who, who's decided. And, and then I would, uh, I would say on there, uh, uh, you know, other events that you have coming up, entice them to sign up. Show them if you've got stuff going on. And then send an email to them. Hey, checking in. Did you get the document? Did it open easy? Did you like it? Start a conversation. And I know this is, you know, micro, but this is the way it works, friends. Micro. And if and hopefully they respond and say, yes, thank you. Say, I have a brand new one on Alaska. It's the top five excursions and how to save money. Is that okay? And, and, and you sort of, you, you want to, you know, it's permission marketing. Get their permission to opt in. But don't send them stuff that they don't need, they don't want, and they're going to opt out. So those are some ideas. And that's a great conversation we can have about building, your, you know, getting them on the list of how to work that, how to structure that. And that a lot has to do with database management, too. you got to know who in your database is into Alaska and who's not. Because then people get turned off. They only want what they want. Lynn says, please say more about removing obstacles. All right. Let, I'm going to answer this right now because this was a great question about uh, some examples of how you address objections and answer questions if you don't know what they are. And this is a great question. And this, this, is, uh, this is an important, sort of an advanced way of, of selling. I believe that you know, if you look at the sales process, normally the first level is qualifying and the second level is presenting, right? Qualifying means you play detective. You ask a lot of questions. You find out what they want. Presenting means you go back and you say, okay, here's what you told me you want and you make your presentation. The third stage is handling objections because you have to eliminate those objections before you go to the step four which is to ask for the business. There are, generally speaking, four steps. Qualify, present, overcome objections, ask for the business. For years, I've been teaching that we must combine the first three. Combine the first three. So basically, Lynn and everybody, while you're asking the questions, you're going to repeat their answer back because sometimes they don't like the way it sounds when they hear it back and maybe they said something wrong or need to expand upon it. So mirror, this is basic stuff. Mirror back their answers. Uh, and because and, what that does is, now listen carefully, is you're presenting. When you mirror back what they say, and you could rephrase it, ah, so you're looking for an uncrowded beach that has to have umbrellas because you don't, you love the beach, but you can't sit directly in the sun, right? You're presenting it. And they say yes. And they're going to say, wow, you're listening to me. You're getting it, Lynn. You're paying attention. I like you because you're, you're focused on me and what I want. And at the same time, you're overcoming objections because you're saying, because you can't sit directly in the sun. That's overcoming an objection. You're doing all three at the same time. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of quick tips here. The first question, Len, you want to start off with, and pay attention, everybody. Pull up a chair. 
take a sip of coffee. First question is not, what do you want? Now, you guys who have been in the boot camp for a while have seen me speak. You probably know what I'm going to say. The first question is, tell me what you don't want. They're going to look at you and go, excuse me? Yeah. Tell me what you don't want. You see, I want your vacation, this one, that I'm going to help you plan, to be better than any vacation you've ever had before. Because my job, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, with you, my job, which I love, is number one, to reduce stress and risk. Number two, to add value and convenience. And number three, to transform your life. To take a trip that is, could be okay to a trip that's going to be the best ever. So tell me what you don't want. The last few vacations you've been on, what was stressful? What went wrong? What do you wish you knew then that you know now? Because you will have the objections come out front and center. But at the same time, Lynn, they're also going to tell you what they want. Because they're going to say, well, we really didn't like doing a buffet at dinner every night. We really had hoped that there was going to be a sit-down option too. Bingo! They've told you what they don't know, what they want. Now, if you only heard the restaurant part, then you might not know that they hate doing buffets for dinner, and you may send them to a place that, that has buffets and no restaurants. You know, you need to hear what they don't want and what they want, because I'm telling you, you're going to uh, uncover a lot more information by starting off that way, and they're going to appreciate it. And when, when they look at you like, you know, huh? That's when you tell them what you're good for. It's what I'm good for. It's what you hire me for. All those people booking on the Internet, they're going to have a lot of stress. They're going to have a lot of risk. They're not going to have a lot of value, and they're certainly not going to have a lot of conveniences. That's why people hire me. I take care of you. And the second point I want to uh, give to you, Lynn, and everybody else is you want to ask high mileage questions because as they begin talking, uh, you, you, you know all the things that can go right and all the things that can go wrong. So if they haven't hit on the food, the people, uh, the, uh, the, the flights, uh, the, the accommodations, I don't know if they like spa, they haven't said anything about spa, because you absolutely want to ask them about luxuries. What do, you, what do you have always dreamed of doing on vacation that you never do at home? What do you never do at home that you'd love to do once? What's in your bucket list? Let's, get, let's knock off two things that's in your bucket list, Mr. Ms. Jones. So there's questions that they may never bring up unless you ask. So you want to ask high mileage questions. And you may have heard this expression before. High mileage questions. Get them to tell you their stories of what they've experienced in the past, what they loved, because sometimes people who come in with a low budget may still come and say, you know what, we always get ourselves a couple's massage. And all of a sudden, you're thinking, oh, I'm surprised. I didn't know they would want that. I didn't know they wanted private, uh, a private tour because they don't like being with others. I would have never guessed. Ask the question. Don't guess. So that's how you overcome objections and address objections. You do it, combine those first three stages, and you need to come up with the solutions because you never, ever, ever want to say, okay, Will that be cash, check, or credit card when there's a ling lingering objection out there? Why? Because they will say, I need time to think about it, and you may never hear from them again. The reason why you never hear from some people again, and you spent so much time on the proposal or presentation, is because there was something you gave them that they didn't want, or there's something you gave them you forgot to give them that they did want. And that's not their fault. It's not their fault. It's your fault. This is our job. This is your job. This is your role. Remember those three things, what you're only good for. And so uh, what you need to do is before you even get to the ask for the business or the presenta official presentation stage, okay, because of course you're going to go back and you're going to put the package together and present it. Of course you are, right? But uh, you want to... Uh, have solutions. Well, what if we did this? No. What if we did this? No. What if I looked into this? 
Yes, great idea. Come up with a solution right there. And even if you know you can do it, say, if I was able to get you a private, uh, what do you call that on the beach there? Mm-hmm. Yep, cabana. Uh, would that be of interest so it's yours every day? Want to worry about the sun? Get treated like a king and a queen? There you go. All right, so Lynn, I do hope that helped. Let's see what other comments came in. We've got six minutes left, and I want to get to a comment made by Sam here, which is really awesome. Uh, Gene, how would you do cancel with no penalty if you normally charge a non-refundable consulting fee? Well, uh, that's a great question. Uh, when it comes to a group, if you have a group leader, then, you, you know, it's one of those things. See, I, I don't, I, I don't, the consulting fee could come with the group leader. If the group leader is unwilling to make any commitments but just wants to see proposals, uh, then I think you would charge the group, the organization, a consulting fee, which then comes off the price. Um, but, I, you know, I believe that when it comes to groups, I'm not sure a consulting fee is necessary because you're going to build in all of your fees and your add-ons for all the work you're doing and all the extras you're building in into the package price so it amortizes out over everybody. And uh, you're going to get them to sign the contract so you, they're definitely booking with you. It's a done deal. Uh, and even you may want to get them to put up uh, a deposit, the actual group, the organization themselves. So they put the deposit up with the supplier, which could be non-refundable. I think the terms are different. We could spend a lot of time talking about it. It's a great question. I think you, you run into more issues with re deposits and refundable deposits with individuals, okay, where they're going to they're gonna run you ragged uh, and you realize that this is going to be a lot of work, it could be FIT stuff, and you don't want to spin your wheels, and you charge a consulting fee. Uh, I'm a big believer in that. I really am. Uh, but I also think there's a big difference when it comes to groups and individuals. I don't know if that makes sense, Gene Ann, but that would be my, my answer there. Uh, the, the, at the end of the day, if, if, you, if you do the group viability test, you've got a great group opportunity here. The group leader signs the group agreement letter, sign on to the group, uh, the GLS, the group loan sequence, then if you have to get back a couple of deposits, that's okay because you still have 20. You know, these people are going to drop out anyway. Uh, and at least you've got those other 20. You lost those two. That's just, that's just the way it works. That's the way it works. And uh, the consulting fee for the individuals, they're going to really hesitate. Even if they lose $25, you're going to have a consumer saying, you know what, it's a year and three quarters away. I, I don't want to make any commitments now because if I do, I could lose $25. Now, it's a lot, a lot, not a lot of money, but somebody's going to say, I, I don't want to lose $25. So be as easy to do business with as possible and build your consulting fees, all your fees, into the package when it comes to a group. Linda says, so I want to form a pampered princess group. Uh, I want to have a cruise night and invite everyone. I want to join our group. So the cruise night, I would just give them information. So do I have another meeting, a group gathering to ask for a deposit? Could we decide the first night where we want to go? Yeah. If you want to have a cruise night and you, and, and you know, you have no idea. There's not like a group leader who is inviting you in. You are the group leader, right? Uh, then I, I think you have an informational meeting. You know, say, hey, look, um, we can have so much fun traveling as a group, but I, I'm not looking to sell anything. But I, I can't, let me, let's have a meeting. I'm going to come and I'm going to talk. What, what do you guys do a short survey? What do you want me to talk about? Who's interested in Alaska? Who wants to learn about river cruising? Who wants to learn about all-inclusive resorts? So get feedback, do a little survey, find out what everybody wants to talk about. So start off as something that's educational. You know, that's it. Don't start off saying, we're going to have a meeting talking about a group trip. If you're that close with people, that might work. But if you're not, nobody wants to be sold to. They don't want to feel intimidated if they show up at the meeting. So turn it into an educational, informational, fun event because this is what you do for a living and you want to share and and then you'll see how that goes and then and, and then step two could be I tell you what if you guys are liking this uh, I, I have a lot of clients that we do group travel for and we can have a lot of fun is that something you all might be interested in 
and then you go into group launch sequence mode but you're still going to talk to a lot of people when where how budgets you know get an idea especially if you're the group leader do your homework so you don't want to present something that's never going to fly maybe have a sort of an inner circle of people to get advice from and tips from and then do the whisper campaign do the whole thing and what's beautiful is if you have a meeting physical meeting then you could all get together and you could do the group of sequence live and in person all right we are one minute left uh, Hans Stewart thanks so much I have run early but I will listen to the rest of you on YouTube love my first time cool Hans thanks so much and Sam those information that the quote you sent me I promise we're gonna get to it next time because it's really good stuff uh, Lena do you have a special area on your website where you have to use a code or something for special things you are offering was available to anyone who goes to the website great question when I write for agent at home when I do a conference like I did Asta I create a separate page so the only piece of people who have that address are the people I give it to so the people from agent at home are not going to have the address that I use for the Asta conference so forth and so on that's how I work it it's just real simple I just create a new page with a name nobody else knows it it's not it's not uh, on any kind of table of context uh, we are almost out of time Yvonne on the river cruise, what are some extras to offer different from what the cruise offers, meaning the pre or post? Let's let's do that in Facebook. If you can wait, let's do it at the next Ask Stewart Hour. Great question because a river cruise includes so much. So what more can you add? That's a great conversation to have either in Facebook or if you can wait two weeks, let's do it. I want to talk about it. Great question. Yvonne, when you open the conversation, people can come up with some place they want to go that you don't know anything about. A trip to Mars. There you go. Hundred thousand dollars a person. That's what uh, Musk says he wants to be able to price it at in a bunch of years. Uh, that's great. So don't go in with a preconceived notion if you're meeting with a group for the first time to see if it's possible. They may suggest a place you never thought of. Lynn, great tips for objections, obstacles, but it seems this has been done with the group leader before designing the trip. What about the travelers? The trip's already been planned. We're going to have to get to that next week, or I'm going to do this on Facebook. How's that? Because you posted on Facebook. Uh, Molly says thank you you're very welcome because I'd like to start on time I like to end on time to respect everybody's time get back to work happy sales we'll see you again November 3rd I will do a tabulation on the mp3 thing but I think it's pretty clear that we're gonna do both I want to thank you for being here thanks for being at boot camp you got any friends or family or other travel professional colleagues who you know need a kick in the boot when it comes to groups send them over here I love your referrals and I love the fact that you're here bye everybody